go with more ReZero web novel cut content. I believe we left off last time around this part. We talked about the important Shadow Garden scene, really highlighting the different actions that represents each thing. I think like what was the most condemning was the sloth one, right? It was right, the sloth one for being able to wipe away her tears of sorrow. Something that we actually did to both Amelia and Satala now. And probably this stuff too. The Biko memory was unaffected, implying that she, her connection with the witch that we also have is the reason why her memory was unaffected regarding the white whale stuff, Rem, the blank letter, right? So let's just keep that in mind as we go on. Episode 25. The witch cult is found in the highway during Subaru and Otto's chase, or followers of gluttony. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense because, you know, white whale, gluttony, but I thought that it was, you know, Betelgeuse's cult members. The witch cult is found along the highway in episode 25 or explicitly, explicitly assumed to be mook cultist. What the hell does mook mean? Stupid or incompetent person? <laughs> Mook means stupid dumb. Alright, they're assumed to be incompetent cultists that follow gluttony. Which is assumed to be the white whale due to an earlier remark by Puck in the episode 18 scene. That's right, there's the whole relationship between the, um, the term gluttony and how white whale was referred to gluttony in the past, but now it's called the white whale. We know that Live Bikentos is an Archbishop of Gluttony, but more importantly, Daphne, the Witch of Gluttony, is the one that created the three witch beasts, right? The Great Ones. The Rabbit, the Snake, the Whale. More Shadow Garden scene. After Subaru is knocked unconscious by the explosions of the magic stones, he finds himself in the dark ethereal realms once more. And this is basically the end of season one, right? This is the end of season one where Subaru saves everybody from the bombs. He throws it nearby the whale in the tree, right? We run away. Patrash is like covering him. Subaru is knocked out. This is similar to the previous iteration. Feeling extreme love and hearing I love you over and over. However, someone else is calling him. Presumably Amelia next to his unconscious body to a world of light. In this, there are ominous lines regarding Subaru, remember who you are. Remember what you have to do. Remember the words you must exchange in the world where you belong. What? He couldn't stay here. And after deciding to leave the world of darkness, he says, next time I'll probably come to meet you. To the shadow which wait, wait, wait. wait. Who the fuck is talking? Wait a minute! So, usually in the Shadow Garden scenes, we see Satala reaching out to Subaru, and then Subaru has these unknown feelings of love, but he doesn't understand. But someone else is calling him. In this, there's ominous lines. He says, there's a he. Am I crazy or here, or... Like, my interpretation of this is there's a guy right now. There's a dude saying these lines it's not satala saying these things it's 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 a dude saying these and next time i'll probably come to meet you no 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 to the shadow which no 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 the way that this is written is very weird in this there are ominous lines regarding subaru but then this is all regarding subaru it has no connections to who the fuck is saying this shit. But if he is saying this to himself, maybe this is like a version of Subaru that has the memories, but the Subaru that we know have the subtle memories wiped. And therefore, this version that knows why he's in love with Satala, that, that knows what he's done for Satala, says all these things. Remember who you are. Remember what you have to do. Remember the words you must exchange in the world where you belong. Huh. Huh. Remember, because again, there is a memory loss component to this shit. Satala Subaru. Is it a past reincarnation? I'm not sure. But Subaru has done many things for Satala, but he doesn't remember. There is this idealized version of Subaru who has those memories that is telling him this right now subconsciously. In 
the world you belong. He couldn't stay there. He is still referring to Subaru. Remember who you are. As in, remember the person who you are for Satala. Remember what you have to do. I'm not sure. Release the seal for Satala? Who knows? Remember the words you must exchange. Does this have to do with the number 2000 that gets mentioned during the talk with Amelia? In the world where you belong, he shouldn't stay there. And the, the you and the he is different. In the world where you belong is Subaru? Or this idealized Subaru? He couldn't stay there. And after deciding to leave the world of darkness, he says, Next time I'll probably come to meet you. To the shadow. Which replies with, I'll be waiting. And the shadow here is Satala. And the next time is referring to Subaru's next time he'll meet Satala. When is the next time that we go to Shadow Garden? In the anime scenes after the season 1 finale. I don't know. We never go to Shadow Garden. But we actually get to see, you know, Satala in second season more and more. But this is really interesting. This is really interesting. My interpretation of this so far is, again... A long time ago, Subaru and Satala, they loved each other, and he knows exactly who he is. But now he is saying all these things about Subaru right now, saying, Hey, remember who you are, bro, your identity, all these memories that you've forgotten. In the world where you belong, and the you is Subaru. This is, I don't know how, it, it keeps flipping back and forth, you know? Remember who you are implies that, hey, Subaru of the anime that has no memories. You are actually supposed to be me who has the memories. In the world where you belong, he couldn't stay there. He couldn't stay there. As in the idealized Subaru that can't exist. The idealized Subaru cannot exist except in this Shadow Garden moment. I don't know, this is fucking... This is crazy, but this is further evidence that supports the claims that Subaru is probably a long-lost love interest for Satala due to some sort of reincarnation or I don't know. Next up, we're in the OVAs. Frozen Bond. In the prologue, information about the four great spirits and an outsider can be found. Okay. The prologue of the story, which was not adapted, contains some world building about the four great spirits that existed before the story. This is funny because now it's going to be like, oh, this is the real ReZero prologue. The Arbiter... Melaquera, who acts to preserve the world's balance. The slasher, Zarastia, okay, who indulges in internal peace in her bed. The stone Muspel, a sanctuary that only exists without will nor word. And the sacred beast, Old Glass. And this term here is interesting, huh? Od. O-D. Right? O-D. Od. That's like the... Artificial soul, artificial ode that we create, the fucking, the Ryuzus, right? Manifested with mana afterwards at, around. Who watches over humanity with affection and benevolence and is the soul of the four friendly to mankind. There is also a mention to Puck as the beast of the end, an outsider to the four great spirits, but with power rivaling them. Because even though there are these four great spirits, right? There's also multiple great spirits. There is a... Uh, Beko, right? Beko is a great spirit, but she's not known as one of the four great spirits. Puck later on does defeat Melaquera and becomes a great spirit though, right? The black liquid in Frozen Bond is not the black serpent. Oh yeah, of course we know that. It's just simply the venom. It's a sentient venom, right? The black liquid explicitly stated to be the black serpent's poison rather than the black serpent itself. Exactly. And if it was indeed the black serpent, we would have seen that purple crest halo thing that we see on the rabbit's ass and above the whale. Not scary, man. We have no idea what the snake looks like. We only know what the fucking poison looks like. And the poison is like autonomous. It moves. It has a will of its own. It's scary. Melaquera speaks about the world's endless history of experiencing great crisis due to the witch's reincarnation. Okay, hold up. World's endless history of experiencing great crisis. Well, you're telling me that the great calamity that happened 400 years ago, similar events like that happened each generation of witches over and over? Melacore's words in the light novel have a much stronger implication that he believes Amelia to be the reincarnation of the witch. I could believe that. I mean, shit. Yeah. So, okay, wait. 
if we assume that Amelia is the reincarnation of Satala, then can we assume that Subaru is Satala's old love reincarnation? So now the story, the main protagonist and the heroine is basically reincarnations of past lovers. That could make sense. I'm not sure. Satala's alive though? Is she really? Her flesh is destroyed, but she got sealed away. But can you still not have a reincarnation? Maybe you could. In the world of ReZero, I could totally see it happening. Some bullshit like, oh yes, her soul still exists, but there was like this partial soul that like she somehow separated, and then that went on to become another reincarnation of Satala. I don't know. I, I, I don't think these kind of rules... I think that these rules are very flexible, since we have no actual strict standards of what is allowed for reincarnation or not. Then goes on a tangent on how history is a spiral. That it's endless repetition and endless transmigration is an error. And that he has experienced a crisis of the world's downfall endlessly. Because nobody learns from history. History is, you know, doomed to be repeated. So, yeah. The Great Calamity. So, can we then expect... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. If our theory right now is that uh, Subaru is the... Uh, what's it called? If we assume right now that Subaru is... Uh, the past reincarnation of Satala's lover. And because he died in the past due to some unfair reasons, and that's why Satala consumed the witches to destroy the world, and that's the Great Calamity. Can we then assume a scenario in the canon current timeline where Subaru dies in... Well, no, he always dies! <laughs> what do you mean? He always dies. But I was just thinking, like, another example of a Greek calamity happening for this generation and, and Amelia doing what Satala did in the past. I don't know. That'd be like a... That would be the spiral itself, but history is, you know, doomed to repeat itself. There has been this fucked up events in the past, and Amelia maybe being the implication that he believes, right? This is not a fact. Everything is just theories, just beliefs, but Melakor thinks that Amelia is the reincarnation of Satala, and the world is doomed to repeat itself. Who knows? Or maybe this time. Maybe this time is the time that the world is no longer doomed to repeat itself. But rather, thanks to the heroic acts of Natsuki Subaru and Nate from Japan, he has stopped this spiral. And... I don't know. We can move forward. Melakor's background. There is a flashback that shows Melakor's origins. As it is rather lengthy, it is best if you read it on yourself than leaving a wall of text. Eh, I don't really care too much. How much is there? Nah, I'm not doing that. Anime subtitles mistranslation. This is more of a mistranslation fix rather than cut content. But what Crunchyroll translated, classic Crunchyroll L. The four great contaminants should have been the four great outsider. This is a reference to the unadapted prologue of the Frozen Bonds light novel. Now, when you talk about... What the fuck is the four great contaminants? When was this ever mentioned? Because I know the three, great, the three great witch beasts. But the four great contaminants? What? When was that mentioned? Was this in the fucking movie? Who did he reference after that? Is the contaminants the spirits? Is that it? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm like, wait, is there another threat to the world? Why would he refer to the spirits as contaminants? And then, why is the official translation outsider? The four greats outsider. Sounds like they're trying to hint at like spirits are from the outside world. I don't know, but um, this is just the great spirits. This is just the great spirits. Oh. In the epilogue. Amelia and Puck's first meeting with Roswell is depicted. Important! Alright, here we go. There is an entire chapter that takes place seven years after the fight with Melaquera. In it, Amelia returns to her house to find a man inside, admiring her map, Roswell. Now, how did Roswell even figure out that Amelia was living here? I'm gonna assume the Grimoire told him? The sudden intrusion prompts a fight to between Puck and the man. And Puck versus Roswell, we saw that fight. It was hype, bro. At least some scenes of it. In which Amelia's house of many years is destroyed! No! No, that cute little... 
Little shed that Amelia lives in? You monsters! Amelia's house of many years is destroyed! After a fight lasting half a day, the man properly introduces himself as Roswell L. Mathers and hands the insignia to Amelia. Half a day between Puck and Roswell, and I guess it came to some sort of halt. Like, no one, no one side could kind of push each other, so it's like a, like a, I don't know, a battle of attrition that just ended. The jewel glows in her hand, and Roswell explains that he has a task that only Amelia can fulfill. And invites Amelia out of the forest, luring her with a reward. A method to awaken the frozen people in the forest. But in the anime, they said that perhaps there's a way to thought. Roswell, I doubt, fucking knows, bro. I think Roswell simply manipulated this girl with fake promises. Half lies, half truth. Not really saying, like, I know a way. But it's just like, hey, if you were to become, you know, fucking queen of the throne. If you could become the monarch, I bet you could find a way, right? So just this poor girl getting fucking manipulated. Because all she wants is the elf... Families, the friends and old lost friends to just be thawed due to some sort of events that happened pre-Frozen Bond, which I'm sure we'll finally get in the trial in the second core of season two. But I think this is a decent place to leave off the cut content. The most interesting thing, there's not much here that I'm shocked by other than maybe this. The implication that Amelia is the reincarnation of Satala, and then that there's like a how... Now, that's an implication, but it is a fact that throughout the world's history, there's an endless spiral of the same disaster happening due to the witches. So, let's just keep that in mind as we move forward and think about how Subaru could potentially be the past, you know, lover reincarnation of Satala. Oh, that plus this scene too, right? That plus this scene. The Shadow Garden in Season 1 finale... The season one finale, the dialogue between Amelia and Subaru is so weird because he mentions the number 2000 of like, oh, if, you know, blah, 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 then I'll mention 2000 things that I love about you. And it's like, why 2000? And I'm like, yeah, why 2000? That's literally the count of the shadows that Puck refers to in the earlier episodes. And now with these lines of somehow a different Subaru with the memories reminding current Subaru saying, remember who you are. Remember what you have to do. Remember the words you must exchange in the world where you belong. In the, wor in the world where you belong. He couldn't stay there. This is clearly like a difference of two separate Subarus that has the memories and the one that doesn't. But it, it just sounds like... The Subaru that does love Satala and understands why he does, talking to a Subaru that doesn't know and, and reminding you, and then, and then the subconscious like leaking out and mentioning the number 2000. Now I have a feeling that's no longer just a random Easter egg, but more proof, more evidence that Subaru says shit due to his past life. I don't know. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.